Hello, Graham from Arian Games here again, and uh, another video in the Advanced Flying Fantasy series. So, for this one, I don't have any books, but I do have some notes. So, what I want to talk about today is sorcery and wizardry, two of the magic systems present in the AFF core book. Now, there are two others, Minor Magic and Priestly, but I'm not talking about those today. Today, I'm talking about the balance between sorcery and wizardry. And I had a, fa a fairly protracted uh, discussion with one of my players uh, in the run-up to a, uh, an AF game we're going to run. And he's, his view swung between whether sorcerers were brilliant and wizards were rubbish, or vice versa. And it ended, actually, fairly uh, unresolved. They're quite different, but I like to think there's quite a good balance between them. So, a wizard starts by knowing a handful of spells, up to a limited sort of power level. Um, and to learn more, he has to spend experience points. So a wizard is never going to have huge numbers of spells, or not for a long, long time anyway. A sorcerer, however, starts with all 48, I think it is, uh, spells in their spell book. They know all of them. There are no more to learn. They start knowing everyone, they can cast everyone from the first session. So of course you're probably thinking, well, sorcerers are better, they've got to be, they know all their spells, wizards have to buy theirs. Well, this is true. But sorcerers have a certain limitation. There's a handful of sorcery spells that are quite potent, but very, very costly, that don't require components. Almost all of the rest require a material component. So the Yob spell, quite a powerful spell. You can summon a giant. Yeah, it's a really, really good um, benefit in combat. But you require a giant molar to cast it. Now these are not just lying around on the ground. You've either got to defeat a giant, or you've got to buy one. And they're not commonly found, and if they are, they're probably quite expensive, and it's used up in the casting. So you are limited. You don't, you can't just summon giants left, right, and centre. Whereas a wizard who has a summoning spell um, could, in theory, summon left, right, and centre. So components are a limitation. Some are really expensive. Some are really rare. Some are very common. Uh, Walk the spell that allows you to create a magical shield on your arm requires a gold piece. Now they're commonly available. But every time you cast it, it costs you a gold piece. And if money's limited, that might seem a big limitation. You're still probably thinking, well, sorcerers are edging it still, or, or quite comfortably. But it's how their spells are powered that is key here. So a sorcerer powers all their spells with stamina. The same stamina they use as hit points. Now this is both good and bad. It's good because stamina is fairly easily recovered and you often have quite a lot of it. So you can recover stamina by sleeping. You can recover stamina by eating. You can recover stamina by um, being healed. You can recover stamina from certain places you find, magical wells, etc. Uh, you can even uh, recover stamina faster with a couple of the talents. So you can get stamina back quite easily. And of course a potion of stamina is by far the most common one chosen by starting adventurers. That gets you back up to full stamina at the start. Great. Whereas a wizard has to use magic points. Now again, they can start with quite a few of these. But they only get them back by with a full night's sleep. So, if you're going through a dungeon and in the first two rooms you used almost all of your magic points, for the rest of the dungeon, tough. You have no further spell casting power which sounds like a bit of a limitation. However, the flip side to this is that a sorcerer who is hit in combat is not only losing hit points, they are losing magical power. So a sorcerer standing at the back of the party and being shot at by enemy archers, every time they are hit, they see the number of available spells they can cast vanishing. Okay. If they do cast a spell, it's like taking another hit. And my player did memorably say, well, you know, what's the problem there? Well, the problem is, if you cast a couple of potent spells as a sorcerer, it could put you one blow from being knocked unconscious. A wizard doesn't have this problem. A wizard 
with their magic points, they can cast every spell they have in the first combat. And all right, they can't cast any more spells for the rest of that dungeon. But they have full stamina, and they are as fit and as healthy and as far from unconsciousness or death as they were at the very start of the session. And so a sorcerer has this strange dichotomy in that a spell they cast pushes them closer to being unconscious. But of course, if they're anywhere near a fight, every blow they take pushes them nearer to unconsciousness. So it's a real balance. They're going to be wary of casting spells because it's using hit points, and they're going to be wary of being hit because it's using power points. And both of these are playing on each other, albeit they can get them back more regularly. So that also is a major consideration. Um, and the other thing to remember is that sorcerers can wear armour. If they've got the appropriate skill, they can wear full plate, which means they can fight. But of course, if they can fight and they're wearing armour, they probably get drawn into more fights, which means they get hit more, which means they have less stamina available for spells. And so they probably don't want to get into fights, but they can wear armour. And it seems a shame to not wear armour and make use of that in a fight. But of course, if they do get in a fight, they're using their power points. So again, it's one of those things that wearing armour sounds brilliant as a mage, except when you think of the problem of actually being hit. Whereas a wizard cannot wear armour. Now, there are certain spells that can provide some protection. They may be able to dodge, and that's, that's okay. But they are still at greater risk of being damaged. And because they tend to have lower stamina than sorcerers, sorcerers often make sure they prioritise their stamina, because they need it for power points. Wizards don't have to. So therefore, wizards often have low stamina. They're a classic... Um, wimpy mage that you, you see in many other games. In D&D you have D4 hit points per level. So sorcerers are tougher than wizards are. Um, but if the sorcerer is going to fight, then he needs some points in stamina and he needs some points in magic to be able to cast the spells in the first place. And he needs some points in skill if he's going to be able to fight. And you've only got limited points at the start. And of course, you're then not putting any points in luck either, if you're focusing on the other ones. Whereas a wizard puts most of his points in magic and he can put a point in luck, point in stamina, whatever. So a sorcerer has a harder time at the start. Do they go all out magic? Do they go fighting with a little bit of magic, etc.? But fighting with a bit of magic seems a waste because you've got all of the spells in the book. So it's quite difficult to design a really good sorcerer at the beginning. Now, there is another consideration. A sorcerer may well start with all 48 spells, but these go up to a cost of four stamina, and they're quite potent. Whereas a wizard, their spells can go up to eight magic points, and they can be auto-death, and some incredibly powerful spells, things like petrify and shape change and, and all sorts. A sorcerer cannot cast spells that are that powerful. So a wizard, although they have less spells, they have the capability to learn far more powerful spells in the end. And so here we have this, this real balance between sorcerers and wizards. Sorcerers can fight a bit better, they can wear armour, they're tougher, <coughs> they've got all their spells to begin with. They can get their magic points back a lot, lot more easily. But a wizard is not weakened by casting their spells. They can learn more powerful spells in the end. And they don't require any components whatsoever. So I think really there is no answer as to which, which is best. Um, the, the, this was an intentional design uh, feature when I first wrote it. I tried to get them as balanced as possible. They each have their own pros, they each have their own cons. Some people have told me, well, sorcerers are better for solo games or games with maybe two, two players, or maybe even three. Because a sorcerer, you can combine fighting capability with armour and so on, and a full range of spells. Now, of course, it's entirely possible to create a, uh, a fighter mage character using wizardry. Have a few spells, fire bolts and combat buffs and so on, and a reasonable skill and a reasonable stamina. Now, you can't wear armour, but of course you can still dodge. 
if you put your points into dodge, you can still be a very capable uh, combatant. You can still be a very dangerous combatant. So there are lots of different ways you can do this. You don't have to go all out magical character with either sorcerer or wizard. You don't have to go all out fighty type with sorcerer and, and use a little bit of magic. You can, you can go somewhere in the middle. But it gives you different options. And I think a sorcerer created with a low magic and a high skill and stamina is going to be very different in play to one with a high magic and a moderate um, skill and stamina. They're going to play very, very differently. And they're going to grow very, very differently. So, as it happens in the upcoming campaign, we have both a sorcerer and a wizard. So we have both of these, and they're making use of both of these options. So, I will come back to priestly magic and minor magic in, in a, a, a future video. And in fact, I will come back to both sorcery and wizardry again. There, there are a lot more to them than uh, just what I've said today. But hopefully today gives you some idea of this real balance between the two different magic styles and how they can impact a party and how they can impact uh, the play of the game. Right, thank you very much and until next time, happy gaming!